Your Life and Time sponsored by the Bards Nest von Dorn County Donegal, one of the best country music venues in the Northwest with a fantastic beer garden, the Bards Nest. I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome country legend Charlie Pride to Hot Country. Charlie, take us back to where it all began for you. Well, as far as uh, uh, professionally in clubs and that sort of thing, it was 1960. I started singing in clubs and I started recording in 1966. So I've now amassed, I don't know how many sales and sales, I think they I'm second only to Elvis Presley. They sold most records on RCA. They tell me so. And uh, but growing up in Mississippi, I, my dad, we had an old Philco radio, and I used to listen right where I'm sitting here now, getting ready to go on to Grand Ole Opry, and I just start singing this one song and that one song and Roy Acuff's song and Eddie Arnold's song and that sort of thing. And who inspired you to become a country star? I guess it was me, because. But my dad, uh, he always, as I say, we we live we li we live uh, 275 miles from here, my home, and 66 six, six, uh, the WSM is six uh, fifty thousand watts, and it just popped right. You know, we could get it just like local radio. You know, and right. So we were, we were not we were not given a chance to touch those dials on the Philco radio. We had my dad everything we heard we heard from what. He wanted to hear. He wanted to hear. So I feel so blue sometimes I wanna die. And so I've got the broken heart. So what? They say that time. Can you remember the first recording you made? I, I think the first recording, not realizing what happened to it, first recording was when I got out of the Army in 1958, and I went down to, uh, as you probably have heard of uh, Sam Phillips. And, yes, uh, uh, Sun. Sun Records and all that. And yeah. I had a guitar, and I played a trade open bar chords, and, uh, and I did a song called it actually, it's the title of it was called Strolling by Dion and the Belmonts, I believe. Right. It. And, uh, but I changed it to Walking. <laughs> and, uh, but he said, do it again, and I did it. And, and uh, 
Later on, I find out I got a copy of it. Let's say put some shuffle on it and released it in in in, in England, uh, in Europe, bro, brother, and made a lot of money off of it. And, uh, so, but I bought me a Sears Roebuck guitar when I was about 14 years old, and I didn't I have no idea how to tune it. So I was listening to the radio, and at the end of the song, I don't know whether it was Ernest Tubb or who, but at the end of the song, it may have been walking the floor with you, tong, 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 bing. So that's the way I, that's the way I tuned it, and I played right. it like that till I started recording. You walk the mountain, or pull down a big old tree. My daddy became a mighty big man with a simple philosophy. But then he said, do what you do, do well, boy. Do what you do, do well. Just give me your love and all of your heart and do what you do, do well. He used to kiss my mother and hold her tenderly. Then he'd look across the top of her head and he'd wink and say to me well, that he said, do what you do, do well, boy, do what you do, do well, just give me your love and all the Can you remember the first time you heard yourself on radio and yeah. where were you? Yeah, we did the Snake Crawl at night. Uh, after we did that, I I kept listening. And it, I always, but made me, I always thought it was my brother right. that I'm next to. We used to, you know, sing together and all that. When he was growing up, he'd sing one and but, but I had to get used to it. I mean, because I says, I didn't. It wasn't that I wasn't thinking it was wasn't me, but it's just that uh, it was it was a funny feeling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to hear yourself there. About of all the songs you would have recorded, Charlie, which would be your first? Which would be your three favorites? <sighs> it's kind of hard because some of them are not singles. Um, I've got one in my which I didn't. I was trying to think how could I record it, and after. Jack Clement got with me and took the guitar and did it a little bit. It's called um, Mama Don't Cry For Me. Oh, right. It's in one of my albums. And uh, But people say then, well, what what song you like singing the most? Well, to me, it's the song I'm singing at the moment because, and I'm glad that, that it's that way because like Kiss an Angel Good Morning, Jack Clement, my producer, used to say, Charlie, you don't want to go 
when you got a great big hot record that was really big and just throw something around, you try to go to find an A song, try to make it a double A. Uh, double A song, you want to make it a triple A song. You find it, find it and so and so on. But always try to think this could be a single, yeah. everything you do. And that's why I think I sold so many albums uh, that, with that philosophy. We're going to do the biggest single we ever had so far. It goes like this. to kiss an angel good morning and let her know you think about her when you're gone kiss an angel good morning and love her like the devil when you get back home people may try to guess the secret of our happiness but some of them never learn that it's Life and Time sponsored by the Bards Nest von Dorn County Donegal, one of the best country music venues in the Northwest with a fantastic beer garden, the Bards Nest. What would be your favorite country song of all time, either your song or by some other artist? Patsy Klein, you're never going to stop wanting to hear uh, Crazy or. Right. Or, uh, it's just, it's just kind of hard. Hard to pick one, yeah. Yeah. Difficult, all right. Charlie, you've had many highlights in your career to date, absolutely huge highlights. Could you single out maybe three highlights that would stand out? In song? Yeah, highlights of your career in general. Oh, there again. <laughs> many, many. Yeah, because I, I, my, I got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I got three Grammys, I'm now a member of the Grand Ole Opry, I mean the Grand Ole Opry, now next I'm in the Hall of Fame, Country Music Hall of Fame. I mean, it. Uh, I think that probably is the biggest that really, really floored me. Right. Is that one? Right. But uh, see, again, I'm so blessed. I got so many. It, it'd be hard to, to just, pick one. Yeah. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you just pin me down, I'm gonna just go with the Hall of Fame. Right. I, uh, Charlie, what's the most part, the most enjoyable part of performing when you're out on stage? What do you find the most enjoyable part of that? When the sound is right. When the music is. Exactly the way it's supposed to be. I could sing all night. And, um, and when people, I'll give you an example. It was in your country uh, when this happened. It was in, uh, I'm trying to think, was it in uh, Mayo? Anyway, it was in Ireland. Well, well I could get, the, if I could get the, the schedule and see. But the last time we were in Ireland. Killarney, we, probably. Either Killarney or Dublin. Well, we played Killarney, but yeah. it wasn't in Killarney. It was before we got there. That was right. kind of on the last part of it. But the point is, uh, we we my band loves ears you know, the, the the playing by yes, with, yeah. with the ears of, and and I've never really loved it you know I, I've done it but I like I like wedges the, the old way when you, uh, when you can hear everything through those wedges and everything is set. Uh, but the best compliment I could get was when in one of my my my, my bass player he was oh. 
we can't take our we can't we can't take our ears that we use. We cannot the guy that uh, my sound man and everything we said, well, we're not taking him. Oh, mm, mm. I said, Ron, it's gonna be all right. So I go on, I get there, I get all the wedges. For who wants everybody having their wedges? I said, you get play. How much you want in yours? How much bass? How much? How much piano you want? It? Are you comfortable? I get all that, and I did the same thing with mine up front. This was the guys that's playing, you know, my band. Yeah. So I get mine. And about the third or fourth date, we had the schedule. Is he singing to a track? Is he singing to a record? Is he singing to a tape? Now, you yeah. couldn't get a better. It's so good. He sounded like the record. Yeah, yeah. Now, so that's that's when I, that's that's my, in what what moment you said what how'd you phrase it? Uh, what was my best moment? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been trying to get. Get everything together, tell you I forgot to. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. All the crystals and the leaves light up to paintings on your wall. The marble statue in her standing stately in the hall. And will the time be crowned that had your life in mind if you dry your tears? And the new words on about your pistol chandelier ever did fit into well with folks you do. And it's plain to see that the likes of me don't fit with you. So you traded me for the gaiety of the well to do. And you turned away from the love I offered you. All the crystal chandeliers light up the paintings on your wall. The marble statuettes are standing stately in the hall. And through the time you crowd that had your life in mind, if you dry your tears. in the news most every day The girl of the social world so the story say But a paper smile only lasts a while and it fades away And the love we knew will come home to you someday All the Christmas Chandeliers light up the paintings on your wall. The marble statues are standing stately in the hall. But will the time that you like to love if you dry your tears? Yeah. When the new words on the One more time. All the crystal. Hey, when the new words off of your crystal candlelight. Oh, you're beautiful. Have you ever passed on a song only to find it become a hit for somebody else? I didn't pass because I didn't want it. Yes. The answer right. you, yes, I have. Right. I'll tell you what the song was, Pure Love by Ronnie Ronnie Millsap. All right. Because he already had... Uh, uh, does my ring hurt your finger was out, so I wasn't going to go back and take that off, pull it back. And right, it. right. If you had the chance to meet and record with anyone in country music, be it past or present, who would that be? If, if you had the chance to meet and record with anybody in country music, either past or present, who?
who would you choose and why? Oh, there's so many I would like to do. First, I'll start with George Jones. I, never, I, I, I did one thing, but it wasn't finished. But uh, if you want to just, if you asking me for any, other, any category of music. Any category of music. Oh, yeah. I, well, I don't know. Probably, I hadn't thought about that, but let's try to see pop. Pop would be maybe Perry Como or, oh, right. or uh, I wouldn't mind. I like his voice. I'm doing something with him. Um, who else? And the blues would be probably B.B. King. Um, I've all, after the RCA let me go, I did a whole album of B.B. King. You know, it's got, I've got to go finish. It ain't finished yet. But, right. So, but it's, that's so many. Of it's just, again, it's just so many. Yeah. Y'all up on all of them. Does my ring hurt your finger when you go out at night? When I bought it for you, darling, it seemed just right should I take it to the jeweler so it won't fit so piece of advice or what one piece of advice did you get starting off in country music that you actually stuck by and you actually followed? All right. Is there any piece of advice that you actually got from somebody right. and you stuck by it uh, for your career? I can do that one. When I started out, I started out singing in nightclubs in Montana and uh, the guy that ran the uh, MC the show at Red Sabine and Red Foley and the group came there to play and I had my song just Next call at night, it just came out. All right. And uh, so he said to me, uh, when they came there, he says, now, Webb Pierce was supposed to be on that show, but Red Foley filled in for him. So I'm sitting at my house, and I'm thinking, oh, they usually go to the radio station and promote the show. So I got in my car and, and got down there. And just as I got down there, him and Red Foley was coming out from behind the, the microphone. And so his name was Tiny Stokes. Tiny, oh, nice. Tiny Stokes is red. This guy sings country music. And I, never, I, I, I didn't, for a long time, I didn't tell exactly what red, red, red kind of licked, licked his lips. And he says, is this something pertaining to civil rights? <laughs> right. So he said, no, no, no. He sings country music. So now Tiny Stokes told me to come, when I come to the show, he's going to give me a signal at intermission to come backstage to meet everybody. Now, if he gave that, Signal, I didn't see it, but I just finally got up and went on back there anyway. So I got back there and I turned to you to get tarp and I started playing with the band back then. So the promoter said, would you like to do a couple of songs on the show? I said, I should just ask me. So I did Hurt Us By The Numbers and Love Sick Blues. And uh, so 
Uh, Red Sabine looked at, they looked at one another, him and Red Forest, I ain't never heard nothing like this before. You before, you need to go to Nashville. So I did. After, you know, my, I said, you have to tell you how I segued out of baseball in the, you see, I was still trying to get in the major league right. at that time. So I went down to Florida. See, the American League expanded in 61, the National League in 62, so they sent me home from the major, from the American League, and I went down. Anyway, Tiny Stoke said to me after they left, the show was over, and he, he was listening to my song, Snakes Call at Night. He says, Charlie, if you never remember nothing else, if you make it, so don't take nothing from anybody, like the Goonie Pills and the bump, all them whatever, uppers and the downers yeah. and all that stuff. He said, if you don't do that, he said, and you lay your head on the pillar, those those vocal cords will stay open all the time. That's, and I never did, I did exactly what he said. The Life and Time sponsored by the Bard's Nest von Dorn County Donegal, one of the best country music venues in the Northwest with a fantastic beer garden, the Bard's Nest. I'm gonna love her on the radio She's gonna hear me everywhere she goes And I'll get her back the only way I know I'm gonna love her on the radio Take these pieces of this broken heart Now watch them climb the country Sing about our love the way it used to be Even if she don't love me I'm gonna love her What advice would you give to new country artists starting off? What, what one piece of advice would you give them in this hard business to try and get established and become a country star? Well, I don't give advice, but I, I, I just, I'll, 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 I'll tell them what I think. Um, I'll give them a suggestion or two, but, but the main thing, you have to, whatever you do, you have to believe in what you're doing and work hard at it. And, and, and watch the masters of it. I mean, watch the others that's made it. And maybe borrow a little bit from him and borrow a little bit from her and et cetera, et cetera, of, of, of what you see and how they do it. 
if they're that successful. And I, I'm going to try some of that too. Right. But first of all, you need to have and be blessed with a voice. I've been, I would bless, I've been blessed with one of the finest voices that, uh, that you could have. And uh, so to try to go ahead and, there's a, but there's a lot of other people got as good a voice as me and all of that, but they never make it. Yeah. So and then people say, well, wonder why. I mean, so it's, it's not that simple when you got the voice. You have to still have the right attitude. That's the key word is attitude. You have to have the right attitude to try to succeed through all of the pitfalls that you have to try to go around, especially me, or as unique as I am in the country. Advice. I was in the country music. <laughs> Before you take another step, there's something you should know about the years I get and how they'll be. You'll be living in a world where roses hardly ever grow. Cause all I have to offer you is me. Charlie, if you weren't a country star, if you hadn't become a country star and a major um, legend at this stage, mm -hmm. what would you have worked at, do you think? What would your career have been? See, uh, well, let me tell you what I believe. In the realms of entertainment, and I, I, I use it, he's a good friend of mine, too, was before he passed away, the, the Duke, John Wayne. He came to my opening right after I opened behind Elvis Presley there. When he first went to... Uh, uh, Hollywood, he didn't get no big parts. He was he was kind of a bit. They gave him little bit parts and things like that. And but but, but prior to that, I, I heard that he he would do uh, props, <laughs> move props around. And he, so I I told people that I would probably be end up being like John Wayne. John Wayne, I'd go up, I'd prop this and they would put this up, and I'd do. It. But then next thing, I'd be in front of the camera. <laughs> so, right, so, right, right. I, that's 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 what I believe I, in done. in that realm. But if I had been in the in the in the, uh, in the business world of companies and things, I probably start as a janitor or something like that, and end up on the top floor or that kind of thing. That's right. that's just the way I. So you were very ambitious. You were very ambitious. Very, in very, you started, very yeah. ambitious. Sold a farm to take my old where she longed to be. We left our friends and old our kin back there in. Black. 
daughter said when she saw those city lights, she said the prettiest place on earth is Baltimore at night. Well, a man feels proud to give his woman what she's longing for, and I kind of like the streets. Job. I ran an old machine on a little cottage in a neighborhood serene. Every night when I came home with every muscle sore, she would drag me through the streets of Baltimore. Well, I tried my best. Bring her back to what she used to be. But I soon learned she loved those bright lights much more than she loved me. And I'm going back on that same train that brought me here before. Life and Time sponsored by the Bards and Nest von Dorn County Donegal, one of the best country music venues in the Northwest with a fantastic beer garden, the Bards and Nest. Rain dripping off the brim of my hat, sure is cold today. Here I am walking down 66. She had done me that way Sleeping under a table In a roadside bar A man could wake up dead But it sure seems warmer Than it did Sleeping in our kingside bed If anybody go at the San Antonio Our Phoenix, Arizona Any place is all right I'd rather fight the wind and rain than what I've been fighting at home. Yonder come the truck with the U.S. mail. Now people writing letters back home. Or she'll probably want me back. But I'll still be just as gone. Everybody, anybody go at the same Ah, a Phoenix Arizona Any place is all right as long as I forget I've ever known her Any place is all right as long as I forget I've ever known her Finally, um, Charlie, tell us about your latest release by Rosette Records, The Ultimate Charlie Pride. It's a two-CD, 32-track yeah. album. Briefly tell us about that um, release. Well, we, on our, out on our shows, on our dates that we do, that's the biggest one they're buying right now. They're buying all of them, but that's the biggest one that they, they're, they're buying right now. For years, you've been friendly with Mick Clerken, who is the mm -hmm. boss of Rosetta Records. And of course, Daniel O'Donnell, another Irish country star, yeah. is on that label. Can you tell, can you remember when you met Mick Clerken first? Um, I don't remember exactly, but it's when he had, he had Ritz Records, I believe, when I met him, when, when, when I first met him. Yeah, you've got him. some releases on Ritz Records yeah. also, yeah. Yeah. That's right. 
you have toured Ireland many, many times uh, in the past, and uh, obviously you're a great friend of Ireland, you're a huge star over in Ireland and the UK. Yes. Do you like touring? Oh, yes, especially over there, because <laughs> they, they don't forget you, they come to see you. And, uh, and in fact, especially in, our, in Ireland, I mean, they sing every word to every song, and you just get used to that, and you... Uh, <laughs> Sweet and I, 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 D, search a beauty buttery. I get to think it all could over. I lost my heart, it seems. I've grown so used to you somehow. It ain't nobody sure that that is now, but I'm lonesome. I got the love sick blue. See, I'm in love, I'm in love with a beautiful gal. She puts the matter with me. I'm in love, I'm in love with a beautiful gal But she don't care about me She's all the trying and trying To keep her satisfied But that girl wouldn't stay So now that she is leaving This is all I can say I got a feeling cold and blue Oh Lord, since my baby said goodbye Hey Lord, I don't know what to do All I do is sit and talk Sweet and I, 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 such a beauty to the I get to think it all could over. I lost my heart, it seems. I'm grown so used to you somehow. Hell, I know by the sugar that is loud. But I'm lonesome. I got the love sick for you. Just put that Feathers and a head of little Tommy Hawk. The maiden work of peace and brave and hope someday he told. Elijah! <laughs> Just put that said he never showed a sign. I be called his heart, I was a maiden. Picking tracks for an album or a single, uh, how do you go about uh, that? Do, do you uh, spend a lot of time trying to um, decide which well, tracks to use? As much as I can, but but uh, I'm not really uh, hard at it. Like I'm, I'm getting ready to do a new CD right now, and I, I'm, I've got two songs I'm definitely going to do. And uh, I I forgot that my the, the steel man, the steel steel guitarist that used to be with me, 
I didn't realize I'd already cut something of his, and he just sent me one just prior to coming here. So right now I have two songs I'm definitely going to cut on my next album, right. and that's one of them. So, so it, it depends on if I listen to it. I, what I'd like to do is from here out, as I talk to you, I would like every song that I that was pitched to me, I would like to, for, which it will never happen, come out like when Kiss an Angel first was given to me, I couldn't wait to get in the, car, in the, in the studio. Yeah. But I had no idea it would do what it did. It's right. the only thing that crossed over in the pop and all that. But that's what I, I look for the, 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 the meat and the lyric of the song. See, I'm in the business of selling lyrics, feelings, and emotions. That's what I sell. Out of here. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. Can I sell that like all the ones that I that I've done in the past? Because some I've cut, I didn't want to cut, but I'm I record. I but I'm not going to say which ones they were. But um, I like to try to when I listen to something, do I really like this? Do I really like this this song? And that's the way I I just curl them all down. If I get 30, 40, I I'll, I'll curl them down to 25 to 22 to and etc. So you spend time listening to every song and oh, you, you go yeah. through it over and over again oh. to pick what you think is going to be. Well, I don't have to look, pick over and over because mm. some of them just hit you right, right, right. The minute you see it here. Yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for taking the time to join us backstage at the Grand Ole Opry. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And continued success to you, and hopefully we meet again. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And tell all of my friends over there, I'll be back to see them. I've I'm going to do it by the door. Clearly, I'm going to do it by the door.